Let me take a moment to try and give you a few ways to wrap your head around the different pieces of technology we'll be using. I'd like to talk about how they're connected to each other and also how they're connected to our history. I think this is the stuff that is largely missing from tutorials. Usually they get right to the how but leave out the why, which I think is a hugely important part of understanding something, so here I go. MIDI stands for Musical Instrument Digital Interface, which sounds very technical. Truthfully, MIDI is and can be complicated in the same way that things like your smartphone, electricity, and the internet are complicated and possibly equal to the amount that we take them for granted. Many people use MIDI without knowing anything about how it works behind the scenes. But in order to really get the most out of your rise in Equator, you're going to want to understand a few things about how it works. Control surfaces like the rise send detailed information to our hardware and software synths in the form of ones and zeros. Much like English, where words are divided into nouns, verbs, and so on, MIDI sends groupings of ones and zeros which tell a musical story. Each grouping or word tells a sound source something specific to perform. How hard to hit a note which pitch to play, the duration of that note, everything about that performance transmitted in binary code. Seaboards have the capability of sending so much MIDI information that it's basically a different language, which we refer to as MPE, multidimensional polyphonic expressive data. A colleague of mine used the metaphor of a highly developed alien species, which in this instance would be the seaboard, making contact with a primitive life form, the MIDI protocol. The Seaboard has the capability of speaking MIDI's language, but it's also capable of using it to have much more elaborate conversations and hold several of them simultaneously. Let's use another metaphor to try and describe the relationship between RISE, Equator, and MPE data. This is a variation on something I read from the opening of a book titled Interactive Composition, which I think works extremely well. Imagine a violin. The wooden body of a violin is a resonant chamber which produces sound when used in conjunction with a bow which controls, creates, and shapes those sounds. So in this instance, equator is the resonant chamber which creates the sound source, and rise is the bow which controls it. Playing a violin takes a lot of technique and practice because there are so many ways to shape the sound. The varying pressure of the bow gives us attack, volume swells, and release. How long we bow dictates the length of each note, and precise placement of the fingertips dictate pitch, and a wavering of them creates a vibrato effect. It's almost uncanny how these exact statements are true of the rise. And as far as how MPE fits into all this, think of MPE as the written score of a performance. It has all the information of which notes on which staves were played and which part of each bar for how long with a full range of dynamic markings and slurs. Except in this case, it's even more than that. The MPE score from a seaboard performance would have markings such as pitch bend and things like cutoff or resonance adjustments, which we don't traditionally see dictated outside of automation lanes in digital audio workstations. One of the most powerful functionalities of MIDI and MPE is that you can capture these performances and their information inside of a DAW, which has the utmost flexibility for you to edit afterwards. Sound sources meet high-level expressivity meets my digital sequencer, and boom, it's a composer's dream come true. So much power, so much flexibility, and perhaps most importantly, so much creativity. Now that we've looked at this from a few angles and gotten some context, let's dig deeper into what the five dimensions of touch are. Each of them relates to a specific gesture on the rise and are inherently connected to Equator. 